of the no. The Tigers four and one. Their only defeat, a close one, here in Baton Rouge to the Auburn Tigers, whom the Gators play next week at Auburn. LSU has won the toss. The Tigers want the ball to start this football game, and that'll send junior quarterback Herb Tyler onto the field with his offensive unit. Let's go on the sideline now with our sideline reporter Larry Vitell for more on Mr. Tyler and company. Larry? Well, David, the Florida Gators have already seen outstanding quarterbacks like Tim Couch and Peyton Manning, guys you want to flush out of the pocket with the pass rush. Herb Tyler is far more dangerous outside the containment than he is inside it, and so the containment of the defensive ends is very important. Tyler is much more like a guy like Damian Craig. He's a great improviser in the pocket, not so dangerous. Let's watch those Gator defensive ends and see if they can up, get upfield and yet maintain containment on Herb Tyler. It'll be a challenge, Nat Moore, for the Gator defense. Herb Tyler, a very athletic player, can throw the ball quite well also, and uh, he has not been real sharp lately, but he's got a lot of ability. Well, that he does, uh, David. He's got tremendous ability, and you know, the thing that, that Larry touched on is his ability to improvise, and you know, it's going to be up to those defensive ends and those linebackers to be spies to make sure that he doesn't break containment. Bobby Stevenson will kick it off. He has done a marvelous job for the Gators. Seems to be getting better and better as the season goes on. Rondell Mealy and Kevin Falk are deep for the Louisiana State University Tigers. And this is what Stevenson has done more often than not recently, and that's drive the football through the end zone. And that's a big weapon, David. Anytime you can make your opponent start at their 20-yard line, they've got 80 yards to go, and the chances are not that good that they're going to score. The Gators' defensive unit. Boy, is it a strong team. Final a wrinkle at the Gators that obviously has Florida off balance. The option. They ran it on their first series and got a big play with Falk. Almost scored a touchdown on that play, Matt Moore. And then Tyler keeps it on their second series, and he takes it 40 yards. And, and that's something that the Gators have not seen this year. They had problems with it uh, last year against uh, South Carolina. And what you see here is that they did not force the quarterback to pitch the football. If you force the quarterback to pitch the, pitch the football, there's a chance it could be an error pass. The Gators have got to go back to the drawing board, go over the sideline, make the correction, because they're going to get a steady guy in this, especially when the, the Tigers see that the Gators have not been able to handle this on the two times they've run it. Boy, if you thought this crowd was into it before the game started, you ought to hear it now in Death Valley. 7-0 LSU. LSU Tigers 7, Florida Gators nothing. The Tigers have shocked the Gators with their early play, both offensively and defensively in this game. Their offense has just moved right down the field, and defensively they shut the Gators down on Florida's first sequence. Daniel Boyd will kick off for the Tigers, who leads 7 to nothing. The Gators even recovered an LSU fumble, but couldn't take advantage of that. Here's Bo Carroll, who ran one back last week for a touchdown against Arkansas, and a big return here by Carroll. The freshman has gone two touchdowns up on the number one ranked team in the country, and this place is on fire. Unless she doesn't give the ball to the fullback much, but this time they give it to the fullback straight up the middle, and he's able to sprint through that Gator defensive line and into the end zone. Wade Ritchie, extra point. LSU. A shocking start in Death Valley. Another look at the touchdown. It's very simple. A little cross block by the guard that's in the center. Johnson seemed to settle down a little bit, throwing the football. And Fred Taylor, had good blocking up front. Excellent drive by Florida. Excellent drive, but more so it gives that Gator defense a chance to go over and, and make some adjustments. Regroup a little bit. Give them a chance to figure out how they're going to handle this option because that's the play that's giving them trouble. Falk is going to come out three yards deep. And Falk is out of bounds across the 20 at the 23-yard line. Demetrius Lewis there to make this special top punter in the country. He's a Floridian out of the Orlando metropolitan area. Lake Mary, Florida, as you look at Quez Green deep to return, and Chad Kessler will punt the ball for LSU. Low line drive kick. Kessler averages almost 52 per kick. 
Green gets past one man. Quez almost busted at three, but goes down at the 41-yard line. Wade Ritchie has only attempted five field goals this season. And uh, 33 is his long. This is going to be a 39-yard attempt from the right hash mark. Ritchie has distance, but he missed it. And that could be big for this Gator football team as uh, they've been able to hold, stop this LSU scheme from putting points back on the board and giving the ball back over to that offense. There's a good look. Well, I thought it was a bad snap, but the holder did a good job of putting it down. He just missed it. Yeah. Hold, holder does a tremendous job of getting the ball up, spent, set, and he just uh, flat hooked it. That's called a pull. Nice job by Tabor, the man that held it after a low snap, but Richie just missed it. And the Gators. Well, what you want to do is you want to make sure you get something out of this. So well, first you want to get 11 guys on the field. The Gators <laughs> only had 10. And LSU is going to take timeout. That is their second timeout of the first half. The Gators have also used two of their three. And Steve Spurrier's fun and gun offense is not having a lot of fun tonight. LSU still on top. The Gators going to go for three. Our Tiger, Tigers are rocking the house tonight in Baton Rouge. They lead 14 to 7, and Florida appears to be going for three points here late in the second quarter. They have lined up for what would appear to be a 44 yard field goal from the right half mark. I say appear because you never know what the coach might pull here. Chris Cummings blocked it. They blocked the extra point last week against Vanderbilt to seal a 7-6 victory and have just blocked a field goal attempt by the Gators late in the second quarter. And LSU still leads it 14-7. And that shows you what kind of speed Chris Cummings had to be able to come from the outside, come around, and able to block it. As you see, Collins, Cooper... Collins Cooper as he goes to hit it, ball goes straight up. Just a good job of getting off the off the ball on the snap and laying out to block this uh, field goal attempt. Second half and march at 80 yards up the field, and we are tying up at 14-14. Robbie Stevenson kicking it off. Mealy and Falk are the deep men for LSU. This will be a chance for Falk to show his great return ability. Falk gets bounced out of bounds at the 28-yard line. <laughs> Florida Gator football on Sunshine Network is brought to you. And there you see Ed Chester coming in, feeling not allowing him to get up and get a, make a big play. Wade Ritchie missed a field goal attempt in the first half. And this one is blocked. Florida will take the football. As Ritchie missed one in the first half and has one blocked. Here in the third quarter, it was Elijah Williams that came in there and got a piece of the football. A big stop for the Florida defense, and they take over. Well, that's what you got to have. Once they get down inside of your territory, you're inside that green zone. You've got to be able to bow your backs and, and get it done. Defensively, they got it done. Elijah Williams coming around, blocking it, giving the ball back to this potent offense, giving them a chance to go down and hopefully take the lead. Uh, neither one of these teams, and here comes uh, 70,000 LSU fans holding their breath as Wade Ritchie, who has missed one from 39, had one blocked from 44, is now going to try one. This will be a 38-yard attempt. And he's 0 for 3. And that's what pressure will do. You, you get the first one, you miss it. You get the second one blocked. You start to rush it. You lose your confidence. And uh, this young man is uh, going to have a tough week this week if the LSU, fan, uh, LSU team is not victorious. Well, we're going to take another look. Uh, it might have been blocked. 
It was awfully low to begin with, though. And, and that's the problem. He's really just not staying yeah. with it. It was blocked. And they get a hand on it, but it was not what you would expect from your kicker. You like to see him get it up and get it up in a hurry. And so far, he's not been able to do that as he's had his second one blocked today. Kick by Robbie Stevenson, 47 yards. Falk was unable to return it. And the Gators couldn't have expected much more than that. LSU takes the ball at its own 43-yard line. Listen to this crowd. That's about all you can do. You know, David, if you're going to throw the football, you've got to be able to protect the quarterback. And the quarterback, if he can't get anything on the football, he's got to take the sack. This time he threw it out there, tried to make a play, and instead, Cedric Donaldson makes the play for a touchdown. Donaldson had an interception, which set up a 14th-ranked LSU has taken the lead against Florida, number one in the country, with 13-13 to play. And Doug Johnson has thrown three interceptions two of them into the hands of Cedric Donaldson, and Donaldson made big things happen both times. Both Carroll from the run. He fumbled the ball, and LSU has it. Troy Twilly fell on the football. This is unbelievable when things are going bad. It sort of snowballs on the day with because both Carroll is running with the football, made a good cut, and the ball just comes out. Nobody hits him. Looked like the ball might have hit his, his thigh and came out on his own. He's got good block. He does a good job of selling it and getting back outside. And here he's just running along. Or excuse me, the ball is swatted out by LSU defender Theo Williams. Tiger. Oh, John X Midas came up and took the pitch man and you've got to force the quarterback who gets the option to pitch the football that way it gives your teammates a chance to get there and you do not force him to pitch the football it's the short way to the goal line the extra point makes it 28 to 14 lsu a shocker tonight in baton rouge but still 11 minutes and 40 seconds to play in the ball game the question is this is extremely potent but you've got to figure out a way to protect the quarterback O'Carroll who fumbled the ball on his last return That's a nice ball game Falk is going to bring it from the goal line Walk to the 30. Number one in the nation. I think they'll let him. Oh, he didn't hit it nice. End over end. But it's going to get an LSU roll. And Florida will have the ball near their own line. A 40-yard punt down to the 21. The Florida Gators, 79 yards from the end zone with four minutes, 20 seconds to play. Two timeouts left. And it is gut check. Win the SEC championship, and who knows, you still might end up in Miami playing for the national championship. Well, this game is over. LSU doesn't have to snap it again. And the Tigers celebrate a huge upset victory tonight in Death Valley, and the fans are streaming onto the field. As you can see, this means a tremendous amount to the LSU program. Well, Jerry Donardo's program is, is officially back. Let's go to Larry Vitale. Okay, Steve, a tough ball game. LSU played awfully well. Yeah, they just beat us, Larry. When we missed pass protection, it caught up with us tonight. And we missed a bunch of and play well. They outplayed us. They deserve to beat us. What can you do about protection from here on in? 